Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. We are live. This, I don't know how we're both going to fit in the camera, and you can't flip it for live stream. I'm going to give everybody a minute to jump on. <coughs> See what's cool is it like so Tony has never done live stream so I'm like gonna tell him what's going on see it shows who's popping on and you can see who's all there so say hi hey girl how are you he's showing your whole face what you mean you can't see me like, well what they can see is what you what, well, what you can see is what they can see all right. <laughs> well, what's up guys So, ladies and gentlemen, the goal or the idea, I kind of wrote a little bit about my plan for this before, was just, you know, I was telling you guys how Tony is like my go-to for all, um, what's up, Mike? What's up? Hey, Tanya. Shannon Rivers, what's up, girl? There's Shannon, say hi. Hi. She's on there. <laughs> You're silly. Anyway, so pretty much like Tony is a wealth of knowledge for me, and so I'm kind of just doing you guys a favor by allowing you to ask him whatever damn questions you Where's want to. Things? That's hearts. People give you hearts. Bobby Plager's watching, babe. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I told you, Bobby, Facebook. All right, I so pretty much, guys, if you want anything that you want to ask, pop it into the questions. I have my laptop here, so I will scroll through them as we go so you guys can pop those questions in now if you want to um, pop. yeah pop them in hmm. hey Bob hey Jim hey Derek what's up guys so if you like I said if you guys want to write some questions in have at it whatever is fair game um, there were a couple of things that some a couple people asked before and so I'll just kind of ask you a few questions start with that Oh, FYI, if you have virgin ears, you should um, put your headphones in or yeah, something. That was, that was a good one. Tom Moak said that. I know, but you're not a good, so, yeah, you don't have a filter. Jim Carrey. He has zero. Let me ask you a few questions. <laughs> zero filter. Okay, so there was a couple of questions that a couple people mentioned before um, that I can use kind of in the middle. But, um, like, one is, so one guy, and I don't know that, that, that you have an answer for this question, but I'll ask anyways. Was there anything that you did to prep or like prepare yourself before, like for life after hockey? No. Because you didn't, it was kind of a... No, well you, pre you prepare for life after hockey, during hockey. That's what I mean. I mean your entire career. Like, but everything you do um, off the ice, everything you do on the ice is a, a preparation for what you're going to do at the end of your career. If you're a dick your whole career in the, in the media and you don't treat anybody properly, you're gonna have a hard time making making men's ends meet in St. Louis. It's a it's a sports town, an extremely forgiving sports town at that, especially to the pro athletes. But uh, your preparation for life after hockey is is your entire career while playing it. You know how you react to the fans. What your uh, your be quiet over there. Our your, dogs your, are crying in the background. Your, your <laughs> answers and, and how you react to the fans, how you sign autographs. Uh, your personality, that is a great deal of how to prep for life after hockey. That makes sense. So you have a couple of messages on here. McKinnon says, hi, Uncle Tony. Hello, McKinnon. <laughs> um, Bobby says that you need to smile. You're well, the I best. Do. And that he loves you. Oh, boy, smile? Bobby told me that's all he's got for me? He says he loves you. Oh, my Lord. Uh, so Derek says, so I've played hockey most of my life. What's the biggest thing Tony took from his hockey days into building a business? Money. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> and what else? No, I'm gonna be, be quiet. I'm gonna go grab him. You <laughs> just keep talking. What is the biggest thing you take out of hockey? I mean, like any 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 sports that you play, any team sport is going to prep you to build a business, be part of a business, be a leader, be a, a leader in a business, be uh, a cog in the wheel of of, of a of a business, uh, the professional hockey dressing room, the minor league hockey dressing room, the dressing room of any hockey 
a team is the best building block that you could ever have for a, a business related uh, franchise or endeavor. And I'll say this, well, what is this, Invasion of the Dogs? Yeah. <laughs> I will say this because unlike football, unlike baseball, unlike any other sport, it is a grooming ground on how to play like a team. It's a grooming ground where uh, leadership skills are exposed. Uh, where leadership skills are developed, and there's no better way uh, to be prepared. Everything, and this is a saying that you hear often, and I say it quite a bit, and, you know, the arena changes, it always does, but the game remains the same. And anything that I can apply, anything I could apply in the game of hockey, I can apply in my game of business. Now, of course, the way it's applied is different, but it is definitely the same game. But it's a different arena. Uh, and whether it's 20 players, whether it's 200, whether it's 200,000 players, the, the same principles apply if you want to be successful. So what is the biggest thing? I, my entire hockey career I take uh, out of, uh, I take to the business, to, to, to the business platform. How I treat my, my employees, how my employees and I, we, we, don't, we talk, in my present business, my windshield business, we don't talk about uh, individuals, we talk about team. Um, I don't say it's it's not my business; it's ours, and I and I say that and I mean it because just because you own it doesn't mean you're going to keep it if you don't have the proper employees. They're representatives of yourself each and every day, so it is really our business, and I treat them like that. And it, it's a team atmosphere; it's a no bullshit team atmosphere. Um, if you if you show up uh, and uh, and you have a lot of cotton that day, you're going to get a hard time. And I mean, and it's going to be brought to the table. There's no hiding. Or you know, no hiding in, in, in our game. There's no hiding uh, on the, uh, just like in the, in the hockey dressing room. You know, the, the sharks smell water, the sharks are going to take a bite. Smell blood, so, yeah. you mean? Yeah, they smell blood in the water. They're going to they're gonna come after you and take a bite. So be prepared. And that is a huge part of that hockey dressing room. It's a huge part of life. Um, and either you, you learn to integrate or you're going to be quickly migrating. And successful businesses apply those principles. I promise you they do, willingly or unwillingly. Uh, the office where you have people that are blocked off from each other, are you kidding me? They're the same. Probably much worse because they're hiding. They, they smell blood in the water. They want to come give Tanya a hard time when they come to work. They certainly do, but they do in a very snide in a very evil way, and it may take all day. Hockey dressing room, it's, it's out in the open, at least, and there's some chance for some, some retort and, some, and, and some, some backlash, but at least it's out in the open. But it, it all happens in an office, happens in big business, everything. The game is the same. The arena changes. Good answer. Long answer. Good answer. All right, whatever. <laughs> Jim asks, how many businesses have you built? I don't know that I even know this. I don't know. I've had that, 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 about five or six. One, five or six. I had a couple businesses in Canada, at uh, BC Outdoors. It was a one that we developed to. Um, we were renting uh, campers, motor coaches, and and such to to tour around British Columbia as a uh, if you were coming in from out of town or from out of state. Um, I had uh, obviously I have the windshield business now, and uh, I had a couple other businesses in Canada that were were metal related and. Um, here, here in the states, of I mean, I had a couple restaurants. Uh, I had a catering business, um, and the restaurants were gym. Then I had the gym. The, the the restaurants were fun for a time, but then the adult babysitting service came into play, and it's a very competitive business. And and again, arena and the way again, arena and game, the team was consistently mm -hmm. fluctuating, and it wasn't because of anything else. Is that couldn't find the right players. And at some point, you get tired of teaching and tired of trying to develop your players because you can't find honest ones. And that was one big part of the restaurant industry is that uh, there is a certain amount of accepted, may I say the word shrinkage, let me just tell you, it's stealing from your employees that I couldn't deal with anymore. And no matter how many times you change the team members and how many times it brought in good, bad, or indifferent, it always seemed to go that direction. Even in the minute scale, I wasn't able to deal with it, got rid of it. On top of all the idiots and Bobby, Bobby's got a great gig going. I tell you what, he comes and shakes hands, pet babies, and he's doing it the right way. I did it the wrong way. I had to be in there in, in, the, oh, in the beginning and the end. Yeah. Oh, in the restaurants, you mean? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Bobby's got a great gig, yeah. great place, and and he deals with it in the right way. I just couldn't do it anymore. 
Uh, and then in the catering business, I enjoyed that. That was a one hit. Got the opportunity to, to cater out into different... Oh, because uh, you like cooking. Yeah, I enjoyed cooking. It was a one shot in, one shot out. So I wasn't able to... Didn't have to deal with everybody every, all day, every day. So it was enjoyable. And there's a couple other ones, but it was pretty much the mainstay. So the, for people who don't know, he's Bobby that he's talking about. Um, there's a fran not a franchise, but maybe it's a guess. franchise. Yeah, it's a franchise of, biz of Bobby's place of Bobby's uh, of restaurants in St. Louis area and outsiding areas that his name is on, and he but he has people that manages them for him. So that's what he was referring to. Um, hey girl, what's going on? Kristen's blowing you kisses. Kristen McMurtry. Kisses. <laughs> uh, so Tanya says, Jamie, how do you go from what you would consider a normal life to a business life, how do you make that transition? There is no transition. There is no transition. Is, I mean, your no, business is your life. Yeah, I mean, your life is business, your business. No, I mean, that's not the way to look at it. I mean, But it is. It, it, it is, and it's not. you got to turn it on and off. That's hard to do. I mean, from regular business to from jumping out of the... There's going to be some bleed through, no mm -hmm. matter how you... Everybody says you leave it at the office. If you leave it at the office... Mm. You're not a business owner. No, you're you going to leave it at the office. You're leaving it at the office. Somebody else is going to pick it up. You know, it's a drop ball. So you got to, as a business owner, there is some bleed through, but you got to allocate time right. and dedicate time and make those times non flexible. Meaning that, if it's uh, for lack of for lack of using real times, let's say you you work from uh, nine to twelve, and nine o'clock to twelve o'clock, you're at work. Well, from you got to accept that from 12 to 2, there's going to be some bleed through. There has to be, and, and through that, and that might be through the course of the regular week of Monday through Friday. Well, when Friday comes, you still got the bleed through. Saturday, you got to allocate some hours that that are non-work related. Sunday, non-work related, or maybe your your business in, uh, is is different days and fluctuates. But allocate that some kind of time over the seven day period. That is non-work related and is not allowed. Turn your phone off. I was gonna say, wouldn't you say like it just comes from you being aware and being disciplined around it, really? Well, because you can't. You can say what you're saying all you want to, but unless you're being disciplined with your time and actually executing the stuff that you need to during business hours, you're not gonna be able to jump back and forth. It's called. It's called hiring the right employees oh, and, and teaching. It really is. <laughs> and it comes down to management and, 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 and trusting your employees and then allowing them. To, uh, to to be part of your business, you know, and the one that I presently have, I have guys that, that I can trust, and I can turn my phone off. I can realistically turn my phone off, and I have, and I do, and, and let them run with it. And when I turn the, get the phone back on, and I say it's been two or three days, and I'll do that, and, and, I, and I trust that this doesn't go just without having a, 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 a learning curve. There's obviously going to be a learning curve with each one of the employees that you trust or you, or you empower with your business. This guy's been with me for five and six years. So the language, the transfer of language, even words, words and keywords and how you treat your businesses, um, I, through osmosis, they pick up those certain phrases and mm -hmm. certain uh, certain attitudes and, and way you do business, and you can trust those employees to do the business for you. And when you get back, whatever you do, don't s step on them if things haven't been done the way you would have done it because you empowered them to do it. There's a learning curve there also, and maybe the way they're doing it is better than the way you are doing it. Well, and so, you know, you've got to be able to, when you empower somebody to do the job, let them do the job. Don't keep in there and, and try to step on their toes. Well, I think a lot of people, and we'll go on to the next question, but a lot of people that are listening um, are not at that point where they have a staff of people. They have, or they or they only have, a, you know, it's not a, a live staff. You're, okay, you know let's, I mean? say, let's say so you we'll, have one we'll person, on. one virtual. Right, but... but Trust them to do it. Um, agreed, 100%. Trust them to do it. If you're going back there and checking your virtual every 30 minutes or every every day or every... That's impossible. Thousand, you can't. Well, well okay. You can't do well, that. I'm sure people do it. Well, well I'm just saying, hire like, them? you can't, right. Why hire them? 100%. I mean, there's sure no purpose. Aren't they supposed to save you time to get best time somewhere else? Right. Um, so, Tanya, you mentioned here, you know, just from playing college sports, what can you... What can you take from what you learned there into business life? I think Tony kind of already answered that with being the team and managing um, that sort of I don't, I don't believe that there's anything more important to take out of, out of sports is the reading the game. 
Yeah. Really, you can apply, just you noted can apply that everything. Statement. Everything is well, applied. There's not one single thing you can tell me in business that can't be turned over in the arena of the game. Not one. Even so, the prostitution I know. business. I know. If you're in the prostitution business in Vegas or in, in Nevada, team, are you kidding me? I know. An arena, same damn thing. Different things going on in the dressing room, I'm sure, but it's still the same game. She just said, Tanya noted um, that she loved that statement. You pay attention to that statement. Big big things are coming along with that that statement. Um, don't go into big, long detail here, but how much business do you still do with the NHL, Tony? None, zero. 100% nothing. Okay. No, I've lost that. I've lost, I've lost, uh, lost affection. What's up, Jeff? Affection for the game. You know, and I'm going to use this expression. This is Bobby's, and, and, and it's so... It rings true, and it always rang true. I played in an era where we played for the emblem, and the guy nameplate in the back, interchangeable. I mean, interchangeable to 30 minutes interchangeable. You could be flown in from the minors, have a bad warm-up, Dennis Chasse, uh, according to the, <laughs> to the coach, and be sent down 30 minutes later without even getting a chance to play. There we go. It's, it's about the emblem and not the nameplate, and I think there's too much... Nameplate playing and not enough emblem out there. Nowadays. Yeah, nowadays, and, and it's it's changed to a point where I just really... And I've lost affection for that. And and uh, I'm not saying there isn't players and teams out there that, are play, that aren't playing for the realm. I'm just saying overall that attitude has, has, uh, has permeated um, the professional sports in all assets. I think, and, and I think hockey was probably the last to be permeated and hasn't been totally permeated yet. But it, it's certainly going in that direction. Has changed to a point where I just—it's not enthusiastic to me no more. <laughs> Hold on, Tony. Did do you or did you do any business with other former NHL players? Um, in, in what facet? Meaning a, a business, like business outside of hockey, obviously. Um, I mean, I don't know what you consider business. <laughs> well, anyway, let's just move on to the next freaking question. All right. Jeez. Jim did ask, what was your least favorite uh, business that you ran? But I don't know that you really would say that you have. Least, least favorite business that I ran? No, I mean, every business that I created, I enjoyed doing up to the only thing that I, I quit. And I sold them, got rid of them was my restaurant, restaurant business. This is the Twisters franchise. Is it, I truthfully, absolutely... 100% on despised it and and that was and I was trying to unload that much prior because it was it, I, when I started to feel that way I was looking for a direction to get that thing sold and get out of it and you know it takes some time and by the end when I was getting things were starting to close out and close down I was at that point um, the love to do it was still there but the ability to deal with the components that were necessary to deal with on a day-to-day day -to -day basis I wasn't. I didn't. I just didn't have that mechanism anymore. Understandable. <laughs> they like the prostitution uh, reference. Well, I mean, it's true. It does make sense. Christine says my face is cracking around. My <laughs> facial expressions. Missy. Not to say I haven't. I mean, I didn't run a prostitution business. Oh. I, mean, I don't speak. I'm not speaking of any uh, I, personal. Well, right. They. No, I think that was clear. No personal uh, reference there. <laughs> Though I don't know. I do. Do know a couple. You do guys. know people who have. Yeah. Not hockey players. <laughs> not, <laughs> not hockey players. <laughs> Missy, I think she was kidding with this, but I have a good answer for it. She asks me, how do I get my husband to do the dishes? So here's what we do in our really? in our relationship. Listen, that's a silly question. Well, here's the thing. So I like, mean, that's, I can answer I know, that. Like, just wait. Is this sex rated? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is don't be a dick. What well, I was, it involves that. Right, uh-huh. Right. What I was going to say is... Um, like, for example, if there's something that I don't like doing or I don't have time to do or whatever and he doesn't necessarily want to do or vice versa, what we typically do there is, like, I'll just explain to him, you know, why. Like, kind of like a more, almost on, like, a respect area. That's where I see our conversation goes to a lot where I'll be like, you know, <clears throat> it would be super helpful for me and, like, you respecting my time if you could help me with this around the house or whatever. And it tends, when you explain it that way, then it's not, like, a chore. It's it's actually benefiting and actually helping me in a big way. So that seems to be... Well, recognition. Right. I mean, let's not... Let, recognition. You shouldn't... If you can recognize something within the within the system that would benefit the other, um, just go ahead and do it. I mean, at some point when you're being told, you should already know. 
And if you don't, uh, if you don't already know, and you've been told, maybe you should put it into the uh, things to do column. I'm not saying you get. It's not saying you have to bend over and do everything. But I'm saying right. what you do have to recognize what needs to be done. And if it is benefiting the other, let's you know, try to get it done at some point. And and if you're being told, and you already and you should be recognizing it, that's a hint, a strong one. And if you're being asked continually, you're being a dick. Maybe you should, if you don't want to do dishes, do something else to help the, uh, contribute. You know, and be open about it instead of ignoring it. So Jeff asks, and I'm just going to answer this short and sweetly, babe, K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, I know this is about business. And actually, Jeff, it can be about anything. You can ask whatever you want, so it doesn't necessarily have to be about business. Um, but why didn't Tony get to talk at Bobby's ceremony? Well, Bobby's ceremony went. Bobby's ceremony was already almost, what, an hour and a half to two hours long. Um, there was no I wasn't way. I not sure if I was going to be there. We were, right. We I weren't sure you were going to be able surgery, to get there. I had a couple surgeries, and you can see I'm still wearing them out. And I got, <laughs> I had uh, all the nerve decompression. I wasn't sure when that was going to happen. All the nerve decompression in the left and right, and, and they went into both my left and right hands and elbows. And at that point, um, I wasn't sure <laughs> when the docs or when... I had I could have been flying to Denver, could have well, been flying to Chicago, so there was no no opportunity for for that. And, and there's just no way they could have had everybody talk, you know. So it would have been cool. Don't get me wrong, but there's just no way. And there it was would have much been. better guys that were in, that yeah. could have spoke that did not speak. Right. I mean, oh I was, yeah, there were some was great like, people. There was a ton spoke. of guys and point. people that that I'm sure would have enthralled that enthralled the crowd and been able to do uh, with a lot more. But yeah. Jesus, I mean, after 50 years. He doesn't, he doesn't know anybody. So no, he doesn't. <laughs> he knows every he person who ever played anybody. hockey. So are you kidding me? Holy shit. He knows them all. It was good. It was good. That the was longest good. employee of the Blues. Of any, I probably the longest employee of, longest any, employee of, the Blues. of any one team ever in the history. On, in day one. Right, that's what I'm saying. He was there. I know. Uh, Can it be 50 years? I know. That was pretty I awesome. I would have fired him. Tony, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you, he really does. Like, him and Bobby are love, love each other. Oh, like, family members. So. That's unbelievable. Anyways. <laughs> we're cracking these people up. Um, Jim says that he agrees with you about the about your era in hockey. And uh, misses it, for sure. Um, How do you read that? Cause you, well, I can see. Is that in Greek? No. Bobby tells good stories about you too. Oh, I'm Bobby sure. Tells, Bobby tells good stories about. He, Bobby tells good stories about everything. If you, read, if you haven't read Bobby's, <laughs> if you haven't read Bobby's book, you go out and get it because that right there, there's some people that write books mm -hmm. and and there's and then later on have to say, well, that was kind of not necessary the way it happened, or all those stories are true and right to the way they were done, and they're and they're funny. You want to talk about that? Those stories are are like Aesop's fables. And I'll tell you why they're like Aesop's fables. Because each one of those stories, you want to learn how to run a business, learned. you want to learn about team and arena. Each one of those do have an applicable. They really do. They really do, and, an, and, a, and a, an applicable uh, uh, moral or applicable ending that would benefit you. It's a great. It's a great book, and it's all it's hockey related, and it's and it's uh, dressing room related, player related, and mm -hmm. definitely Bobby player personality related. Uh, oh gosh. Um, Jim, it's Bobby Plagers who we're talking about. Um, so funny story. When Tony and I, we've been, I don't even know, babe, we were together like less than two years, I'd say. It was early on in the game. And, uh, we went to a charity event. I had never met Bobby before. And he was like, hey, I'll be right back. And just left me with Bobby. And I was like, I don't even, like, I have no idea. That's like the beauty of me and Tony's relationship. I don't know who, like most people who played hockey don't know their names or anything, you know, I don't know. And so just like the nicest human being ever and just made a lasting impression on me and like had me rolling laughing and then later Tony's like, do you even know like who, I'm like, no, not a clue. So like I, I love him big time for that because it was like, the, he just left me standing there because he didn't know I didn't really know anybody and Bobby was just thing. chilling and talking with me and being funny. Hey, that but, guy on the ice, I, I recognized him. Right. I'm like, hey, I know that guy. Um, yeah, but no, really, you don't. No, not really. Tony, <laughs> Tracy talking. wants to know what it's like to be known as the roughest hockey player. Roughest? I wasn't rough. You're kind of rough around no, the edges. I, I mean, it was, I played, I, when I played, there was a job. I was, you're, you're allocated jobs and, and job descriptions and 
are, are extremely important. You know, again, going back to business, each one of your uh, each each one of your your people's in your business, you yourself included, each has a job and they're allocated a job, and that's uh, and they're a, a component and a, a player, a chess piece in the game. Mine was pretty simple. Mine was really simple. Mine was uh, to allow the other players on my team to play 60 mm -hmm. minutes a game if they had to. Give them the opportunity to have a second or a second and a half mm -hmm. or half a second with the puck without the fear of being run in the end of the boards. With the fear of not being chopped down with a stick. And, you know, how that job was exercised um, was through fear and intimidation. And fear and intimidation is probably one of the most... Uh, I think it's the most influential way to to impose your will upon somebody and or a team or a franchise or a league to allow your guys to, to do the job. That was my job, and and, and I enjoyed doing it. Unlike some others that, that didn't enjoy it, I truly enjoyed doing it. Well, there's another question about that. And second. it doesn't start in the game. It starts before the game. It starts in the, it starts in the papers. It starts. It's all again. It's. It's the way you tell a story and how you have the difference between good and great. And Bobby can uh, to attest to this. I don't know. The good ones, watching. the good people, the good people, you know, they can tell a story. The great ones, they have other <laughs> people tell your story while you're in the room and you don't have to say a word. No shit, right? Isn't that, mm -hmm. I've witnessed that, yeah. actually, That's on the best. occasions. That's the best way. Jeff says he's waiting on my book, and I can't wait for my book because it's going to be amazing. Tony I, knows. I do want you to get that released. He's like, every single time that something, a situation, he's like, there's another situation for the book. I'm like, I know. Do it's, we were, I've talked with the I know. people, and yeah, it's yeah. in the works. Sure, sure, sure. It is, it is. Um, oh, let's see. Tony needs to write a book or a blog. Hey, Tony, what's the name of that book, though, that um, you the did code? the the code? Christine, the if code. you want to look up a good book. Um, the, code, the code was a... Was a he did the, I did the forward, forward. The forward in it. And then I helped, and I helped with, with, uh, with a lot of development, a lot of the, the different... Uh, aspects of it. Aspects of it. And it's a really good book. I, for me, it's writing a book. That's not happening. I, he doesn't want to too, write a book because he's too there's, twisted. There's too much, too much other stuff that would get. I mean, you can't tell. A, you can't really do a book unless you're telling. You gotta kind of tell all, and there's really things that I can't even talk about. So. Right. I'd be like, you run for president, you leave yourself open, right? I mean, yeah. you really do. I mean that uh, that <laughs> the show that Trump did, uh, the, whatever years ago. Oh. What was that called? That building billions or whatever. Now you. Oh, I have no idea. Everything gets put on the table. I don't need that right No, now. you don't Not want to say that. to relate to the president, but... Oh, so Brian this says that you were the man when he was growing up and that I was one of... I was uh, I was actually in his first graduating class when he was a teacher. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We put those together. I know. Mm. Shut up. I know. Who cares? Oh. Everybody knows. Yeah. Um, so you just covered that, obviously. I, were any of your fights planned? In Tracy, what respect, like that she says, like you were, and, and you were paid and, to fight, but were they planned out? Like, did you know who you're going to fight? And like, if there was a discussion sure between him? the two players, or let me let, let, let me give you a brief over. You planned to fight. I planned to fight every game. Explain why. Oh, explain this. This is a really. I mean, good, I mean you the prepared. mental how you did I mean, it. Plan to play every. Now, there's no discussion. Now, obviously, you do have players on other teams that completed the same job that I did, and you know that there's an opportunity mm -hmm. each and every night. That you could be engaging it with that player, and you know, in eighty-two game season, you know, the, with the potential of eighty-two fights or more, that's not going to happen because your hands can't handle it. But you have to be prepared to fight eighty-two times. And, and whether you're sick, whether you're not, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're fighting with your wife, your girlfriend, otherwise boyfriend, if you're gay, it doesn't really matter. You got to be prepared to fight. Now, as far as did you know, was it pre-planned? And what does pre-plan mean? Pre-plan well, means I'm going into the game with the thought that if somebody does, if there's an opportunity to either raise the, the elevation of the roof, to raise the enthusiasm in the, in the building because you're down three goals, or somebody takes a run at one of your players, yeah, it's pre-planned. I'm pre-planned. I've already fought that guy 70 or 80 times over the course of the week in my head, or more prior to hitting the ice that game. Um, Pre-planned, I'm prepared. I guess pre-planned is yeah, not pre the word. Yeah, prepared would be the right word. And it's not WWF. It's not WWE. <laughs> it's not like, oh, second period, and here comes your entertainment. Uh, you know, it's not happening that way. Right. But you do have to keep in mind that 
the mental aspect of what I did is a lot different than, than the, the mental aspect of the guys that are scoring the goals, but the same pressure applies. If you score goals and uh, you're not putting them in the net, the pressure is the same. You start choking on your stick, you don't feel confident, guys, uh, you know, the, the, the players are on you, the, the, the media is on you, well, you know, how come you went dry, how come we need you, and that's hard. Same thing with a, with a guy in my position, the preparing for a fight. I mean, think about it, and it, it equate to this. You're going to school, and you want to get good grades. You want to be on the honor roll. So you got to apply yourself each and every day to get good grades and, and go to all your classes. But you know at the end of the day, at 3 o'clock when the bell rings, you're going to have to fight the biggest kid <laughs> at another school every day. And, that, and they come to your school, and everybody watches it in the field. And I'm, and I'm saying, I'm, I, I did that. That was part of, part of what, you know, what happened in high school where I grew up. But that's every day, and now it's the National Hockey League. The biggest players, the strongest guy, the guys who actually fights for a living. You have to fight him. So, yeah, prepared? Yes. Planned? No. Um, the opportunity to do it each and every night? Always. <laughs> Which is why you were there, right? Mm -hmm. Christine notes that Mac is jealous because she can obviously hear him. Oh. Um, so I have told them that you are a great chef. And that you've trained with I'm you know, a professional chef. chef. You're a great chef. <laughs> not a Greek chef, a great chef. You're silly. What is your favorite dish to prepare? Oh, boy, favorite. I have many. My, my steak is my favorite only because that's not really a dish. It's a, it's a carnivorous <laughs> piece of lovely meat. Don't but knock this um, uh, I have plenty of dishes I enjoy doing. It, it, I don't have a favorite per se. I really don't. I don't have a favorite per se, but I'm going to say, you know, the, the staples of uh, comfort foods, you name a comfort food, I enjoy doing. Is there a favorite comfort food? No. Um, from stews to, to, uh, to, to pot pies to, to anything to do with any kind of starches, that being... <laughs> that being Does it cook healthy food? <laughs> no, I mean, I can, but... Everything's super rich that he cooks. Um, it's you know, all pro, delicious. Does anybody know what you know, pierogies are? That's a... My mom oh, yeah. makes amazing oh, pierogies. You can't even touch her I, I pierogies. I love pierogies. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you don't compare. No, and, and something <laughs> it, it, in that, comfort foods are my most enjoyable things to cook. And, you know, you can go, that list is extensive. So Stop with the, well, noise. I can't help it. The extensive list of the comfort <laughs> foods and uh, anything that's carnivorous. Even chicken embryos is as simple as those are. Eggs. Yeah, chicken embryos. He means eggs. He chicken embryos. In not in proper terminology. Uh, go ahead, chicken embryos. Well, his, his favorite, Last quantities. my favorite. <laughs> Cloven hooven. Stop it. Clove hooven. Uh, Animals. Boven clove. Uh, ho ah. Never mind. You're going to talk about pigs and how yeah. these, yeah. yeah. My favorite dish that he prepares is scallops. Just saying. Oh, the scallops. So and good. I enjoy it. Scallops are delicious. Um, so John asks a question that's entertaining. Who's tougher, you or Reed Lowe? Uh, toughness is never <laughs> toughness is never evaluated by win a win loss column, and I tell you the toughest guys he that I've ever also fought. Just no, and I'm going to tell you this is a great question. I'll tell you why the question is relevant because I, I get asked this: on Who do you think was the toughest? Right. Well, I'll tell you something. I thought every guy that I was going to fight was the toughest, and I'll tell you why. It takes only one punch, one single punch, to get knocked out, and if you're not prepared. Because you take somebody lighter than another person, and they get one in. Mm -hmm. Guess what's in the paper tomorrow? You laying on the ice, and it'd be it's a, the greatest shot ever. Remember when Muhammad Ali stood on top of Joe Frazier like this? That right there is not the picture you want to have in the paper. So who do I consider the toughest? And do I think who's tough between me and Reed and Lowe? Tell you what, both of us went to war in the same way. Reed wasn't scared to fight anybody. Reed was the type of guy that knew his job, knew when to do it. And uh, knew how to do it. So as far as that goes, I put us both in the same category. Um, there's plenty of guys. Chaser, for example. You know, Chaser was fight doing battle with the biggest guys in the league, and he was 200 pounds, if that. Maybe at the end of his career a little heavier. But, uh, <laughs> but he, again, wasn't afraid to fight anybody. Guys he shouldn't have been fighting. Really, realistically, shouldn't have been fighting because they're, they're out, of his, out of his category. And he still did it. Um, and a lot of a lot of guys that aren't afraid to get out there and do it. And the difference between being tough and not tough is if you get an ass kicking in uh, on game forty two and game forty three comes around and you're apprehensive about doing it, not so tough. 
game 43 comes around and you're biting the bullet, you can't wait to get out there and you can barely see out your left eye and your right hand hurts, that's tough. That's a pretty solid answer, huh? Yeah, I think so. Is there a team that you hated playing? My, oh, like, Who did you hate No, you no, hated I Detroit? loved playing Detroit. Don't get me wrong. Hated, loved to hate playing Detroit. And, uh, and there was a, a, three players in particular. You know, LaPointe was one of them. Malt B was one of them. And Draper was one of them. Fucking hated those assholes. It's the in Jim knows hockey. But so I he would, knows what you're talking but, about. But, <laughs> but when you hate three players like that as much as hated the... Love playing, take any one of them to play on my team. Well, right. That's the so fun part. So don't understand, don't misunderstand me. I hated to play Detroit for two for two reasons. Those three guys, and Detroit was a tough team to play. They and I mostly sat on the bench when I played Detroit because they were so damn good. I mean, they're, the the ninety six ninety seven years of the Detroit Red Wings were, were, I mean, stupendously talented. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't, you know, lines one through four were. Strong, girl, than most, first, <laughs> a, a, most teams first and second line. So, the 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 amount of uh, talent <laughs> the Detroit Red Wings was amazing. Did they hate to play them? Yeah, because, because there's an opportunity to get embarrassed. That's the oh. one thing that you never. There's an opportunity, and any one given night playing Detroit, you could get embarrassed, and not because you didn't have the talent to compete, but because they were so that so damn good. That if they wanted, if, if things went the wrong direction, they capitalized. It could be a seven to three game. It could be an eight to three game. That's embarrassing, and that caused a lot of problems. That's the team that you hate to play. Kelsey liked your chicken embryos. She started laughing. <laughs> well, she they're undeveloped. She thought it was okay, funny. Chicken undeveloped. embryos. Uh, Kristen agrees on prime rib. She loves it when you oh cook for God, her. Oh my God, prime rib is delicious. All of my Tomahawk friends, steaks. All of my friends and family members, if Tony's ever cooked for them, it's like they don't even need to, they, that's all they ever ask me for. Can Tony cook a steak? <laughs> Maybe. Um, Kevin, just want to say everything you do is awesome and you're truly great because you support us vets. That carries a lot with me. You're very welcome. Thank you for saying that, Kevin. Thank you. You know that I got your back. Kevin is Chrissy Chambers' cousin. Family related. Um, yeah. So Mike wanted to know, he would love to hear you orange talk. Orange vodka. No, that's not called vodka. <laughs> orange vodka. Orange vodka or Vess. Uh, Vess and squirty orange stuff. I know. Um, Mike would like, like to hear you talk a little bit about confidence, like how you built it and maintained it, because I'm sure there were some other really good fighters. So, Confidence is a, is a, is a tough one. I'll tell you why confidence is a tough one. Not everybody's supporting you. <laughs> confidence is something you got to build yourself, and that's such a that's such a hard thing to do because you're while you're trying to build confidence, there's other people trying to tear you down, you know, voluntarily and involuntarily. So you got to recognize who who was trying to uh, was trying to give you a hand, and you got to recognize those who are trying to tear you down, and Disseminate between the two and realize that the information from one is no good and the information from the other is a positive, even though it may be um, it may be a negative when they say something, but they're really actually trying to build you up, not tear you down. Um, so that's a, that's a key important part of the building of confidence, but the most important is, is the mental game, the mental strength that it takes to build confidence. Uh, you don't walk in to any job. I don't care who you are. You might think you are. You might, walking into the job, you may think you're the rooster of the hen house. I don't care. I've seen it so many times. You might be a 25-year-old kid or a 28-year-old kid coming into a business, and you've been hired. Your accolades are extremely strong. You've been here. You're schooling, and you're promoted as being the answer. You've been given confidence prior to getting into the job slot. That franchise has given you that confidence. All right? You haven't earned it at all. You've been, you've been fed confidence. You'll quickly realize that you're not the rooster. That the confidence that was given to you is actually confidence that's being taken away from you from everybody else because you haven't earned it. So the conf when it comes down to, 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 to truly acquiring and building it, it's got to come from you. It's got to come from knowing your game. Know your game. If you know your game and you know how it's played, you know the intricacies, you know the plays, you know what to do to complete your game, that's confidence. 
That's confidence. Now, whether you're successful every day or not is inconsequential because over the course of time, as you build and refine your, your playbook and as you build and refine your game, your confidence will grow and so will your business. There is no such thing as uh, quick success. There is, and there has been in short term, but long term it takes a lot of time to build. There's no such thing as walking into, I'm going to start this business and it's going to be successful immediately. I have a no-brainer. You really, yeah, you do have a no-brainer because you're talking about one. You, it is a no-brainer. There's no such thing as a one as a no-brainer. It takes time to build. And confidence is a key part of that. And if, you're, if you think that you're going to come in and start a business and it's going to be successful right away, and you're going to knock the, knock the dick out of it, you're <laughs> so wrong. And you may do it short term, but equate it to this. When you build a house, you've got to have a strong foundation. The foundation that you build your business on is the one that's going to keep you long time, term or short term. You've got to make sure, you want to understand what do you want to do. You want short term money or long term money. And there's the advantages to doing short term. Also, then the disadvantage. Short term, you, 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 you in it, uh, get in and you quit it. Well, your name's not going to be so good, most generally. Long term, you build a solid foundation. As you build that foundation, your confidence grows. And that confidence grows because as you're building, you're learning the components and you're learning what you're putting into the business. You're learning the game. And if you're confident of your game, if you're confident that you know it, uh, and the more that you do it, that confidence builds. And you're going to get tore, tear, uh, tore down on many occasions by people that know the business better than you. And, and you may be put in your place. And that's great. You got to take it. Take, you know, take, the, take the shot in the chin, put that information in your pocket and, and go with it. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's the part of it. I can't, I can't stress enough that you can't build, and especially in mine, like for, I didn't walk into the National Hockey League, the reigning champion, the, you know, the oh, heavyweight. I didn't. You know, I, I, I started the minors. You know, it started way before the minors. It started in junior hockey. Where where did, you got to build the foundation. What about the, like, a lot of that was your mindset related? Well, my, my, your everything's, my, everything's mindset related. I don't, don't. But, I mean, you built yourself up. Well, yeah, because, it, again, going, knowing the game, if you know what you got to do, if you know what your, if you know what your game is, you know what it is, you got to, there's nothing more important than prepping yourself. I can't stress this enough. Visualization is a key component to any business. And this again, oh, visualization. Man. I visualize, and you can visualize. If you want to be, you want to make $10 a month, you got to visualize $10 a month. You got to be able to visualize how you're going to get $10 a month. You got to be willing to accept $10 a month because you're not willing to accept it. Why even bother earning it? Because you don't know how to spend it. So it's so important in the game of hockey, visualize this guy, visualize fighting. Visualize winning and visualize how do you take that win? Well, there's certain ways you can take the win. You can be cocky, shove the 10 bucks in your pocket, shove the win in your pocket, put your hands above the air like this, give the old, I got the reigning championship belt. And you know what you're going to get? You're going to get, there's always somebody bigger out there. You're going to get, you're going to get pounded. And when you do, that confidence that you had here, that's the quick win confidence. And it's going to take it away and it's going to take two other pieces away with it. But if you learn how to spend your $10 properly, reinvest, like the wind, reinvest, put in here, be humble. The next time, the loss that you take, because you're going to take one, isn't going to be as bad. So, I mean, confidence is uh, it's a, it's a long-term piece, and it's got to be visualized. It's got to have a long-time visualization process. You've got to have a start. You, gotta, and you should have an end game. My end game, I always had an end game. My end game was to win. I wanted to be on top. With as many teeth and as many <laughs> brain cells removed from the opposition as possible, and that's the truth. I mean, I, I said it before, I want to hurt. You want to hurt the other team. If you are, want to visualize your business, it's not about paying. You want to capitalize on what you're able to capitalize on. If there's twenty bucks on the table, you want twenty. All right, you want all twenty. That's your end game. You want all twenty. Now you may even get three. All right, but you visualize twenty. You receive three, and you know what to do with the three. Still got 17 left out there. Got to do better next time. Now that's just it. And, and visualization is the most important part of confidence. You got to visualize and know your game. It all starts here. Yeah. Like when you were saying that, I'm like, see, I don't make all this no, up. But you got to know your game. This is not a new thing. Know your game. <laughs>
Don't have somebody. If you, you can't be a pretender. There's no such thing as imposters in any business. There is. I've seen it. I've watched it. And they get exposed. I don't care. You will get exposed. It may take a day. It may take a month. It may take a year. It might take five years. But when you get exposed, the hit will be tremendous. For you can be an imposter, but you will get exposed. I don't care who you are. Every imposter who climbs the ladder gets exposed at some level. And sometimes they make it to the top. Then they get exposed. Mm -hmm. But at some point you will. Build it properly. And FYI, he visualized leaving with all of his teeth and he is one of the only hockey players that still has all of his regular I wanna, teeth. I want to keep those. Trust me. His parents Chiflets. will tell you it's the truth. Yeah, my mom his, will. His mom and dad will fight Definitely you. Definitely will. will. fight you on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you feel about the Blackhawks? In what relation? Joel Quinville now? Should have kept him. Love, love to have Joel Quinville as the coach. <clears throat> Got rid of him a little bit too soon. Don't know why, but the Blackhawks are a tremendous hockey team. Um, I, mean, I was talking to Brooksy uh, two days ago, and they're just a, a strong, young, not as young as they were when they won the cup, but a, but a very enthusiastic club that, uh, that Mike Kitchen and Joel Quinville put together, and they've harvested and harnessed uh, their powers, and they've got a, they've got a, they're at the, when they won their back-to-back -back cups, and even now they're they're the team that I'm talking that we're playing for the emblem. And not playing for the nameplate in the back. Yeah. Really, they really are. And you can see it on the bench. Most of the classic examples, going back to the most recent cup win. And it's an overtime game in a playoff series. They pan over the benches and you can see <laughs> Chicago's happy. They're, they're, they're joking around. Not joking around because they weren't taking it serious. And they had sweat in their faces. They didn't look tired. They were joking around because they knew. They had the confidence and they had... They were the that they were going to win the game. I mean, they were. It was an overtime. The game hadn't decided, but in their heads, they were already. They, it had already been decided they were going to win. You can see the smiles on their faces. You pan over the There's other no team. Doubt. The guys are sweating there. I mean, they look tired. There's not a smile on the on the bench. What? Are you kidding me? That I mean, the game was won already. They are in the game. You talk about confidence and visualization. They were already there. So what do I think of the Blackhawks? Joel Quinville has taken. And, we, you know, Brooks and I are talking about this. It is not a, uh, it's, a it's a new a new era for the Blackhawks. The old era now ended because yeah. the Bobby Hulls and of those days was what Chicago was living on before. Now, an entire time. new era. Joe Quinville and that group and that team has started a new era of, uh, of Chicago hockey. The Blackhawk hockey has that and now they have this. The new era started when Joel took them to a couple Stanley Cups. And I'm proud of them. I'm, I'm certainly uh, one team I enjoy watching. That is true, actually. You do like watching them. Um, John says we need to get you, Sean, and Andy on a stage in STL. What a, doing what? Just talking. Oh. It'd be freaking awesome. <laughs> like when you went on your spiel about confidence, there's like likes and fire things happening everywhere. Everybody <laughs> loves it. See, this is this is my locker room conversation when shit gets all bent out of shape, and I'm just like, oh my god. This is the conversation that I have in my corner. Lucky girl, right? Sometimes. Let's see. Oh, sometimes. That's true. You are the most difficult human being ever, too. Yep, check your ego at the door. Awesome chat. Jim had to jump off. True doc confidence is built through educating the mind and applying the knowledge. Yep. Mike says awesome. Harley says hi. What's up, Harley? Hey, good job the other day taking the phones. Looked uh, yeah. pretty damn good. Actually, was, I, I'm, I'm disappointed because now what you've done is you put everybody else in a bad position. <laughs> you did it. You did it well enough. Now that everybody's going to expect to be, well, come all that information isn't be like Hardy did a better job than you. Yeah, yeah. I guess he did a better job. <laughs> Bastard. Yeah. Good work. JJ, you want to have well? JJ, hit me up, and we'll have to have a beer sometime. I've known JJ for a long, long, long Double J. time. Yeah, for a long, long, long time. Um, one last thing, and like I'll give everybody else a sec to pop some stuff in if they want to, but one thing that I think is really interesting is how, and not even necessarily with, you can use the team you have now for a reference if you'd like to, but I think the way that you manage your, like how, not how you built the team you had, like how you built the culture that you have on your, in your business right now, um, I think your take on that is really interesting. Um, 
Good. Because it didn't happen overnight. You know, it's taken you years to get your guys where they're at now. And well, so, it's taken not by my guys. It's not even. It's, it goes farther than that. Just from my guys, like, my clients. But I also think like. What about for you though? Like, what do you do internally for yourself, and like, what are you paying attention to and acting on, and that sort of thing? You know what I mean? We can talk about how your guys act all day long, but what it all like really comes down to and back to is like what you do as that like leader position. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta have a basic set of principles, and you gotta have a, a basic set of principles and and uh, ethics that you're gonna work by. And this comes to and. The emulation of the the emulation of the enthusiasm and commitment to the job can only be can only be duplicated by the people that work for you is uh, um, by the way you act and, and the way you as a leader as a as a as a leader of that group or, or team acts. If you want to act as somebody that's not responsible, you want to act like somebody as a guy who who uh, commands but doesn't lead, you, you sooner or later you're not going to be commanding anything. <laughs> you won't be commanding anybody. You certainly won't be leading anybody. So you got to be willing to put the time in and the effort in that you demand out of your employees. And you also need to demand that out of your clients. I don't care. <clears throat> I think the, the bigger part of this is, is that through, and I like the word osmosis, through osmosis, who works for you are going to pick up and start doing work the way you do. Speak like you. or And that could be good or that could be bad. Don't get me wrong. It can go can both be, ways. It, it can go both ways. It can be good or bad. But the principles, all right, the principles, the principles of how you want the work achieved will be adopted. Now, and that goes, if it's a good way, it's a good way. If it's a bad way, those are adopted too. I promise you, those will be adopted also. So, um, and that goes right to your clients. Your clients are, uh, are obviously a key component to the whole of your business. So you have to custom pick your clients. Your clients, you want to be positioned. Your clients don't pick you. It's a mutual decision. And I and I, and as I told Jamie this, it's got to be a mutual decision. All right. So if you're engaged by a client that wants to hire, so I'm going to hire you. Hold on. You're interviewing them as much as they're uh, interviewing you. It doesn't mean that I want to work for you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you don't want to work for me? Well, I just met you. I just <laughs> met your company. Just because you want to hire me, you cocky bastard, doesn't mean that I'm <laughs> going to work for you. Uh, and that's, that's true. It is so true because... It's a mutual It like, has agreement. to be. And, 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 and sometimes the client is taken back and offended by that. But if the explanation is this, if it doesn't work for me... It's certainly not going to work for you. If it doesn't work for you, it's not going to work for me. Now, we can throw the dice and, and gamble, but let's do a little field work first prior to burning down the grass and see if we're actually going to work. The personalities have a great deal to do with it. Uh, demand and the completion and, and, and task accomplishment has a lot to do with it. Those demands on the other side, before you discuss it, may be beyond what you're able to complete or... The demands on the other side could be so uh, obsequiously out there that you don't understand that uh, no matter what you do, is not going to be good enough. And again, it comes down to, again, the business. Does the business pay on time to the people that you have to deal with on the lower level? Because it's never going to be the higher. It's never going to be the white collar that you deal with. It's obviously in my business. It'll always be the blue collar that I deal with. So the guys in the shop, they're the most important to me. Because I know if the guys in the shop and I get along, eventually the guys upstairs are going to get us paid and everybody's going to make it easier to do the job because the guys down below are the ones we deal with. And if, uh, if the guys in control are no good and the guys in the blue cars, it, we're not going to work. So it comes down to, to, to those very simple, very, very simple client and, and uh, the, the question, going back to the question, what is, it, it's, it's not the employees. The employees, if you do the right thing and you and you demand and command the right thing and you work in the trenches that they work in, you're going to get the result there. And then the other part of it is you need to pick your clients. Your clients don't pick you. Well, I think it's a mutual decision between the two of you. And, and, and well, I'm sure we've all been part of some bad clients. I'm sure we've all, and could that not have been or solved? Bad leaders. Bad leaders. Maybe that could have been solved in the beginning. I mean, it doesn't have to be a torture process to, to learn that it's not going to be a good fit. 
you know, and no use shoving in there because shoving in doesn't hurt. It hurts and tears skin. You don't want to have that. So let's let's do it the right way in the beginning. And and uh, I don't know how many people have actually said, well, I don't want to read it down. One second. Just because you want to hire me. I know that's an odd question or an odd something to say something to somebody, but when really put it into, into, into play, it makes sense. And starting a relationship in that way, probably the strongest way to start it because then there's nothing, there's no... There's no probably, guessing game. There's no guessing game. I mean, when you when you first start to date somebody, is it really that person, or is it the is it the representative of that person? Because no it, shit, right? Is, is it the representative? Point. Because the representative is only trying to get in your pants. <laughs> the real person, <laughs> the real point. the real person, really is not the representative. So for the first three months, you only meet the representative. And then when it all becomes comfortable, three or four months or a month or a year later, you meet the real person. It's like, holy shit, who are you? I don't know you. Yep. I'm all that sh the, what are you trying to tell me? I bet you, you leave the toothbrush and the toothpaste who all over the place. Who is this emotional girl? I mean, what the where did this shit come from? Where are all these I don't understand. The representative. Bring that one back. What's it? I want yeah. the representative. So again... That that you laugh as you may. No, it comes down. But, but why to that. why have a representative speak when you want to speak to the real person? Get it out in the open, and that's business. Business play playing out. Maybe you and I don't get along, and that and I've had businesses that have approached us, and I've turned them away. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I knew it was going to be catastrophic at the the beginning. Mm -hmm. I could just see that the guy that was working that uh, working the shop is going to be a clash of the titans, SMS small man syndrome. It was going to be a you know, who's the boss out there without Tony Danza? I didn't want that. I did not want any part of it. I just I really can't work for you. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's move. Uh, John, so Tony owns a um, windshield repair and replacement company, and he does mainly fleet companies. So it's a lot of fleet management and a lot of clients. So that's why like, it's such a high, like a large client conversation, because he's actually managing and maintaining what they need and when they need well, it. Well, we have... They, we're we're managing probably eighty or ninety companies. Right. Uh, in Large in that, companies. In, in that aspect. So John's from St. Louis. So, so like you, pretty much almost every big company around. So you, you think of like the, the FedExes of uh, of this side and then the other side. All their all of the FedEx um, uh, people that oh my. Uh, the businesses on this side and on the east side and then the trash companies. All the big trash companies. We do every one of the, the big trash companies. Uh, you know, from the republics. Uh, um, to, and they're, they're, they've all changed names, so I mean, yeah, I, I could say, say, but all the, the, the three or four major trash companies that we have in town, we do all those also on the year on the other side. So the the dynamics of clientele and, and clientele base is, is massive. It's just massive. You meet all kinds of people. So Deborah, you remember Deborah? who we had drive us in our silly limo? Yeah. You know, she's yeah. on here. She's the God, I love her. Guys are great. Debbie um, V. Yeah, Debbie V. Um, so a question came in from Shannon Rivers, and I promptly asked, "Is this Shannon? Where are my cookies? Is this Shannon or Jamie? Because I'm pretty positive this question came from Jamie." And it, where are my cookies? It was. Before I say it, Sean Vincent's on here too, and he appreciates the great work you and your Sean! team Sean, Sean, congratulations! Um, congratulations! Um, have you? You're ever... still alive. I met your father-in-law to be. Oh, your father-in-law's fun. Oh my lord. Um, to be. <laughs> have you ever showered with Gwen Anderson? I have. <laughs> That's a question from I Jamie. <laughs> I have. Gwen Anderson is one of the most charismatic human beings Stop I've ever met. This. What I am good, John. Uh, Gwen Anderson was a was a goal scorer and <laughs> and character from, from years gone past in the Edmonton Oilers when the Edmonton Oilers uh, won four <laughs> Stanley Cups in a row and <clears throat> Mike Keenan imported. Damn near half of that team in 1996, 1997 to make our to make the Stanley Cup push and run against the Red Wings. I tell you what, we were damn close. In the seventh game, long story short, I'm not even talk about that. But yes, back to the showering event. Neither of us were playing, and Glenn <laughs> Anderson is. You want to talk about a guy with charisma and a guy who who was a leader in his own way because he was confident. You going back to confidence? Where we neither of us were playing, so we had a workout. Uh, before the game and, and going into the first period. And so we're showering up before the guys get in on the first period break. And I said, Andy, man, there's a lot of rumors out there. Um, that you may, you know, bat from both sides. You might swing. You might have a little, you know, both sides in you, a little gay. And he goes, 
looks at me deadpan. He goes, you know, nothing I won't try once. Yeah. <laughs> I heard this story so, before. So, and and I, every and single I, time. <laughs> so I, I accidentally grabbed the, the drop of soap and I said, oh, fuck. And I, can you get that for me? Bends down to get it. He goes, you motherfucker. And he starts <laughs> laughing and that was the end of it. It was well played because Andy, uh, he was confident in what it, his confidence level of what he, who he was and, and what he did was high enough that a question like that didn't even phase him. No, well, and yeah. the answer doesn't phase him. And what? And, and the and, answer doesn't phase you because you. No, it was. It was so. Life. It was no. But it was just. It was beautiful because he left it out there for everybody else to think. But and he's not gay. I can tell you that much. But it was just a funny way for him to end. He didn't need his confidence level was high enough and and how he conducted his business. He didn't really care what you thought, right? Or how you even thought it. And when I asked him to get this so <laughs> oh my god, that was the best. <laughs> Thinking that we're shutting, we're not showering all the way across from each other. I made sure that when we were shutting out, the showers are huge. There's 20 of them in there. I made sure I showered beside them. Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did, which is why Jamie's bringing I'm it up. I love it. I'm showers are big. We're not on opposite ends. I'm, st I'm showering right beside him. Oh, my lordy. <laughs> that was great. You're a mess. Oh. Okay, let's have, a, let's have a real question real quick. That was a real question. No, that I know. <laughs> that was a real answer. <laughs> I told you guys he was crazy. Um, Lisa asked, if you have any suggestions on dealing with a difficult boss in a job where you feel stuck and unappreciated? Wow. Without knowing the circumstances. Right. Without knowing those circumstances, it's pretty hard to, to give an answer um, to a question like that because uh, there has to be some more information. In order, f the, that relationship between uh, employee and boss it's created on two sides. It's not just a one-sided. Um, it's not a one. And if it is a one-sided piece, then you got to go. And it has to be. Right. Meaning this, it, there has to be two sides to that story. You didn't. You weren't hired. Him hating you or her. I don't think. Usually, that's not a. You're not usually hated, unless it's another woman and she really wants to see you fail and wanted to torture you. Because I think women are freaking evil. I, I I do. I mean, if it's another. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You I know. You, I've been there, in the... There I've could been, be another woman that hired you and that and wants to see you fail because women are that evil. I'm going to hire her. I'm going to crush her. Oh, yeah. I mean, I outside of that, more information has to be furnished. What is the answer? Um, off the top of my head, I don't have one, but I can say this. The only way to approach that is with mm -hmm. complete 100% honesty and saying, hey, do we have a problem? Right. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that because I don't know the circumstances. But at some point, that will be the answer. Not sure it's in the answer immediately. But I know that will be the answer. And that will be the answer long term will be, do we have a problem? And if the answer is no, then your answer is going to be, well, I feel this way. And why, why do I? I the answer to this question. Why do I feel this way? I feel this way. Why do I feel this way? Right. And it's you directly that are making me feel this way. Right. And if I feel this way and it's wrong, can you tell me why? And that's the, the easiest way, that's the, the best way of getting it out there. And I'm not saying that's immediately the way to do it because I don't know the circumstances, but I do know that will be the end. That will be, that will be asked sooner or later well, in order to, to rectify. So, for example, I have had experience in a situation similar. Well, not, I wouldn't <laughs> say that I felt stuck, but I was dealing with a difficult boss and feeling unappreciated. And uh, I had to take a big, fat like step back and look at the situation and some of it I had created for myself. Some of it was either things that I allowed, um, like being pushed time-wise or like not standing up for myself on certain things, um, allowing myself to feel disrespected or like not speaking up, kind of like he said, speaking up when I'm feeling like, hey, that's, that's making me, or maybe that's not my responsibility or I feel unappreciated because of this big giant project I just did or whatever. A lot of it was things that I was doing or not doing, I should say. Um, so when I looked at it that way, and Tony was a big part of that conversation, you know, or that like s realization that I had, we kind of talked it out, but this was years and years ago. But um, when I realized that, then I was able to approach the actual situation in my workplace in a very different way because I wasn't looking at it as, oh, I have hurt feelings or I feel stuck. I was looking at it as, okay, here's the real situation. And can we have a conversation about this? Or when, like, my biggest thing was, like, my time being used differently and me not ever standing up for myself. So 
you can do that without being an asshole or without starting drama or whatever. So that's what I started doing. Equated to this, the, and, and this this is an awful lot. The magnifying glass that you're looking through, right, is not this big. Great, great point. It's the Hubble telescope. Right. All right. So the Hubble Jesus. telescope, you see all of that yes. out there. The magnifying glass, you see the piece of paper that this is that this big. Yes, there is a magnifying glass that you're being put under. It's not the one that this this big. It's the Hubble telescope. So step back a second and look at the whole thing. The Hubble telescope is a lot of look. There's a lot to look at there. There really is, and maybe maybe there's an opportunity to to glean some more information. But at the end, really, at the end, if those questions, if you believe that you've looked at all the avenues that where you may have been successful or failing or things that you believe weren't successful for uh, for that relationship to succeed, the question needs to be asked, and it's always a good way to ask it. Is this? Man, I, I'm really, and a good leader well, will understand just, this. She just answered us. Yeah. This okay. isn't, she, I don't think she's got a, I don't think that's an option. Okay. It was not an option? Well, like she said, it is a woman. She used to be. Oh, well, there you go. I can't, I have no answers so for they her. Used to, Anything's well, possible there. So here's my thing. Anything's so, possible. He said he used to be friends outside of work and had a falling out. Can't ask those questions because she will make your life miserable. People call her bipolar. Okay, so... Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, so the answer's the, already there. Well, here's the deal. Get so, out. Sooner or later, well, you'll blow rabbits on your stool. Here's the other thing. So... <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not kidding I know, you. I know you're not bipolar, kidding. I've had... If you've well, got a woman so outside of work... Well, what I'm trying to say is... Yeah, bipolar. What, what I'm trying rabbits. to say is... Rabbits on your... Glenn, is Glenn that... Glenn Close. Glenn Close. Are, Glenn Close. Glenn Close. If there's anyone... <laughs> if there's any way that you can speak to someone else besides her about the situation, that would be my suggestion. If there's a boss above her or something like that, or if there's a way to get transferred out of that situation, that would be Holy what I would cow. look towards. This kid right here, this is what you guys keep seeing me look towards. He's been, like, literally pushing me with his feet this entire time. And I'm not kidding about the woman aspect of things because anything is possible. I've seen it happen. I've seen well, where I've a woman seen, is, I've here's watched the thing, it though. happen where Anthony. a woman has hired another woman only to crush her. How many, okay, but how many men did you watch to try to crush me in my in my profession. I get that, but they're... You're know, saying that, it's not just women. People no, just I, are I, assholes no, can sometimes. I just, can I verify this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. The amount of men leading and in leadership positions to crush women are vastly more um, a, 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 vastly more available than the women leading to, to crush women. Plus, men's aspect of, they don't even come close. They don't, they don't have, they don't come close to the ability of evil. And you know this? A woman will, has... A fast more her playbook's much larger. Well and much more creative. Well there's a reason behind that, unfortunately. There's a reason behind it. There's a lot of women feel that they have to be that way in business because they have to fight for their That's, position and I understand. all their way to where they're so at. I can't answer because so, they're so yeah. much more creative. Women and, are and you know this. They're well, and way it doesn't more have creative. anything to do with that. It's a mindset thing and some people just They're much more creative. Some people just and vindictive. to see okay, we can this is Glenn about, Close, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, this isn't about I'm just, I'm that just though. Throwing it out. We're not bashing women. I'm not bashing anybody. I know, but aware. we're not also having a large conversation. Be about aware. Women. My goodness gracious. Mom! You just Mom. joined, you missed the whole thing. My mom just popped on. We'll go over it for you right now. No! <laughs> <laughs> no way. You guys will just have to watch it over. Alright, so. Um, that's the end. If you guys that are live, there's still a bunch of people that are live. If you guys want to pop a question and we'll, we'll sit well, tight for... Live. Shut up. They're live watching currently oh. at the moment. If you guys want to pop a question in right now, have at it. Uh, we'll no sit, DMW here? We'll sit tight a couple minutes. No DMW? What does that mean? Dead men walking? No. Okay. No dead men walking. Let me make sure we're not missing anything. If somebody goes live to dead on... Do we have... Never mind. Just stop. You're crazy. You're crazy. What's funny is I think a lot of, you know, the, other than like the personal questions about you, obviously, I think a lot of the underlining things when it comes to businesses and running businesses and relationships and confidence and all of that, what I love about it is it all goes back to... Game and arena. Yeah, but it all goes back to you. Like, it's a my, it's you. It's your mindset, well, your, it's your actions, it's your, your everything. It's your life. But that's what people don't... Holy shit, but master of your own destiny. Right. Or and density if you're, like, back, back to the future. Well, you are my a, density. Of my density. You are my density. It, the problem is, is a lot of people don't think of it that way, though. They're looking at everyone else for answers instead of looking at themselves. Instead of starting here, 
They're looking outward for Master all of, of the answers. Master of your own density. Destiny. Density. Casey, can we double date and see Beauty and the Beast? Him and Kristen are asking. I would love to go see Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I want to see it so bad. It came out on the 17th. It did. It did. Today's the 19th. It did. So it it's is. available. Well, obviously. See you at 8. So that's his question. They have babies. They I can't know. Just I'm, go. Just, I'm being a dick of Oh, I forgot to tell you Casey broke his arm. What did he do? Pat himself in the back? No, he fell. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was off the cuff, by the way. That was off the cuff. That was good. Uh, earlier, Kelsey said something about your laugh being contagious. Oh, boy. It is. <laughs> sure it is. It's obnoxiously oh, yeah. loud yeah, is I what know. it is. That's why ex-wives, they love it. It's contagiously out. You know Matt, uh, Matt Crosby, don't you? I do. He just said hi. He's I on do. here. What's up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said what's up. Or like this. Yeah. What is, what is that? Stitches. Oh, okay. Stitches. We'll stitches. get stitches. Stitches get stitches. <laughs> oh, my. We should I can't keep you alive for much longer. Oh, Lord. So, guys, after this, let me know if you love this because we can... Um, I don't know if I'll get him to do it again by himself, sure. but his friend Pat wants to do this. Pat Byrne calling you out. Oh, <laughs> I will to. set up the camera and you and Pat can just conversate and it will be awesome. It will be. It might hurt people's feelings though because you guys are so raw. You hurt people's feelings. You could just hurt people's feelings a lot. I don't need to hurt. No, no. It's not, it's yeah, not, you don't mean it. It's not intentional. You can only you have your feelings hurt if you're ready to get hurt. Um. Okay. J JJ says what? One thing can you say about building a business and the success and failures that come with it? That's a good question. Success JJ. and failures, they're all part of building a business. Don't think for a second you're not going to have failures when you start a business. You're going to. There's going to be, it, there's going to be, and don't limit it to small and big. There's going to, failures are coming different ways, different sizes and, and various shapes. And, and what you consider a failure is not a failure. It's actually a learning experience. It's a learning experience and yeah, it's a soft way of saying oh, it's a failure. No, it's not. Going back to the building of a foundation of a company, again, when you fast grow and you don't take the time to learn the minutia of what takes it to run the company and to build one, you will eventually see later, but the crack that you see later is going to be so catastrophically large and the amount of plastic work that it's going to take to put that crack back together <laughs> is going to take much more time and effort and money. So, what, talk about failures and talk about successes. When you build it properly from the ground up, you're going to have small cracks in, those, in, the, in the building of the house. The foundation will always be solid because you started, you started it the right way. You, what you may think is a foundation crack or a failure is just another building block. It's actually one that you're putting on the foundation. It's all, it's a failure. Oh, it's cracked. I can't put it down. Actually, no. It's actually a block you use. It's going to make you stronger. It's going on top of the foundation because it's not a failure. It's, a, it's something that you need now to learn now because learning it up here mm -hmm. could oh, be devastating. a failure. Could be devastating. It's the difference between knowing your business and not. And as you grow your business properly, you learn smaller things here that you're going, you, that goes in one ear and out the other. Trust me on this. It goes in one ear and out the other, and then one day, two years later, it's presented in a different way up here, and you're going, holy shit, I almost did it this way, but remembering what you learned down here, you do it the right way, and it's a success rather than a failure. So uh, the, difference, the, the difference between success and failure is, is this much, but it's actually this much, because failure is because you haven't built the foundation properly. There's no such thing as failure if you built this here down here properly. Yeah. All you have is, all you have is better blocks to build on. Agreed. And would you go so far as I I believe this? Like if you're not, quote unquote, failing, then you're not doing anything. You have to. You know you what I mean? Like if you're actually trying something and doing something, then you're going I don't, to have yeah, those failure. Is, failure could be a negative word. You can take it's, it for what it is. Right. I don't take it as a negative I, I, word. Right. Okay. But, but I mean, failure is a good word. I mean, you want to you want to get. Uh, Philosophical, it's the wrong word, but failure's a good word for it. I mean, you gotta have, you gotta, I mean, it's like a loss, put an loss in the loss column. Anybody, I've never met, if, please introduce me to the man that says he's the toughest in the world, has never lost a fight. Oh, introduce not, me to that man. He's never been punched in the face. And, uh, just introduce me to the dude that says that I am the toughest motherfucker you've ever seen, I've never lost a fight. Introduce me to him, because I can promise you within 30 seconds I can find somebody to do it for him. 
that's not going to be me. That's not where I thought you were going with that. Be, and it's not going to be me because he's a liar. Yeah. He's a liar. There's no way. You've got to take some beatings to become to become great. You're going to take beatings. You have to. There's no other way that you can do it. Again, arena and game is the same change. You're, the skin that you that you thicken up, the, the knuckles that have to get strong, the, the, uh, the, the face that takes a beating, the arms and the strength that it takes to do the job, uh, the people that you meet in business, that you form relationships and, and to, to build your business. It's, it's all the same. The game and the arena are the same. Agreed. Um, Jamie says, always remember rollerblading in Venice Beach. Yes, and you know what the best thing I like about that is? You guys have such a bromance. I know. It's and so cute. I don't want to blow this out of the water, but the worst <laughs> thing about that is, is that Jamie played it as a joke. Not this Jamie. I Not know. this Jamie. I know. Just so the people I know. Not He's you. talking about Jamie River. I know. <laughs> so for, for shits and giggles, he put on the tightest pair of shorts. Do you remember the old gym shorts that you used to wear <laughs> that had the flaps that was right down here? All right. He had them so yeah. tight and he put socks down there and he, oh my Lord, shirt off and he put a pair of earphones in, but he wasn't listening to everything. And he was, it was all disco music. He was now turning around. It wasn't rollerblades. I had rollerblades. He had roller skates. The four roller, the roller skates. skates. Nice. Oh my Nicely God. Done. Nicely I thought he done. was kidding. Nicely done. I don't think he was. I don't know. He probably wasn't kidding. That's awesome. <laughs> did he have his tramp stamp then? Uh, mm, yes, he did. <laughs> that makes it even better. Yes, his target was there. Jamie, if you're still That's listening, not a tramp stamp. That's a target. That makes it even better. Target. You have one too, so I don't it's want to hear it. It's a target. These big old tough guys with their <laughs> tramp stamp tattoos. Um... <laughs> um, gosh, damn it. I just had an idea or something I was going to ask you in my head. Shit. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I'll make up with you, I guess. I, <laughs> yeah, that was my question, for sure. All right, we've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, I gotta eat. Yeah, I know we need to go get food. All right, see you later. Thanks, guys. Enjoyed it. We'll do it again some other time, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh, <clears throat> you leaving me? I got you get eat. up and stroll around I like eat. an old man? Eat. Thank you guys for listening. Um... If you like the video, share it. Think it'd be cool. It was, I know it was really freaking long, but I'll probably pull out some little nuggets maybe yeah, and make some other videos. Yeah, <laughs> and now you know that yeah. he's insane. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> oh, we love you guys too, Jamie. I mean, Jamie and Shannon and your whole clan if you're there. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See ya. Max, say bye. Max done for. Bye, guys.